Okay, welcome back to Digital Art. We are continuing work on exercise two, which is part of unit three. And so we can shortcut right to it by going to assignments, since we've already been introduced to it. Scroll right down to exercise number two, where we post it. It also gives the directions. We are using PhotoP, all freeware for this. All freeware, all semester. And we started with using this emoji maker link and the limitations within this to create something close to what we want. <laughs> I'm just letting it randomly generate. Now, my emoji is based on my favorite cartoon and I settled on Felix the cat, right? And the, um, the emoji maker I made looked like this, which is way, way different than, or Bucky the cat, rather, I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do kind of a mix of, of Felix and Bucky. That looks way, way different than what I'm going to end up with. But it shows me how vectors work. And we saw the difference between raster-based images, you know, these pixels, and the vectors that actually create things like emojis that are like cutouts of paper. So in order to create our own, we have to use vector tools. And for this, we're going to use them within PhotoP to keep practicing our compositing. So this is my PSD. This is where I left off in the last video. And I had just brought it into PhotoP. So have to be careful. Don't want to double click it. That opens it in Photoshop. What I want to do is open up photop.com. And if you're behind, you can always just follow those instructions to get caught up that are in the assignment for exercise two. Exercise two is due by 11.59 tonight. So be sure to get something posted for it, even if it's just your initial emoji. In fact, I'm going to be safe right now and do that. I'm going to start a post with my name, the name I want to be called, and then the last name as registered. That also helps me see how large I should make the image. And then I'm going to use the upload image, and I'm just going to bring in my process image, just this screen grab from the emoji maker, because it's going to be humorous how much it changes. And then I shrink it down to be no more than about four times the size of my name. And then post it. And now I've got something posted. All right, that's kind of an engagement check. So now let's use PhotoP. And to open from my computer, I can just drop the PSD file into it, my Bucky Cat. Notice that I have saved it with the name SP23 for spring 2023 2. This is my second art section. And some sort of, oh, I, I'm going to actually amend that and add my name because I want your name in all of your files. So your name and then some sort of description. And I can close it in PhotoP so that I open it again with that name. And then as I hit Command S or I say File Save, it will always show you the shortcuts here in PhotoP. Then it will update that file as I go. So for instance, if I turn off that pink nose and then say save or command S, now the pink nose is gone in the preview. So it's saving in real time from that one I <laughs> saved and organized into my folder. If I turn that nose back on, and then say command s then the nose is there so we know that that file is updating instead of making lots of duplicates and downloads the only way you can get it not to make lots of duplicates and downloads is to move it into your own folder give it your own name and then reopen it all right so i've got a pink nose because bucky's got a pink nose if i want to be able to see bucky this image of Bucky. Maybe I need a better image. <laughs> but this is my inspiration from this comic strip, Get Fuzzy. 
And emojis are interesting, right? They need to be like logos. They need to be visible from a distance. And Bucky the Cap from straight on isn't that recognizable. So it's always, this is a good one. It's always at a slight angle, but he does have a pink nose. So what I might do is save that image. Then I can open it up in preview, make it a little bit bigger, and I can even crop it just to around what I want. So command K is the shortcut for cropping within preview. Then I'm just going to keep that open. And off to the side here so I can remember what I'm going for. Because the emoji I started with is not that close. <laughs> so sometimes I need inspiration showing. Okay, now let's see how we set this up. First, I brought in just a PNG from a screen grab from that emoji maker one. Because it's always good to have a template to get us started. Then I use the shape tools which are close to the bottom of your photo P tools, same in Photoshop, and it's a whole drawer. And I chose one that's kind of the biggest shape. So I'm starting with an ellipse, which is just a drag and drop circle. I also got Kleenex for the class for anyone who needs it. All right. And then once I have that, I can use Control T to get the transform tools. And that allows me to squish, if I hold down shift, the circle. And if I right click within it, I can do things like warp and tug it down on certain angles. Now Bucky's head is a slightly different shape. So I'm going to go ahead and make it a slightly different shape. I know I already created a shape. I'm just showing you that again. So I'm going to do a shape like this. Now, though Bucky's nose is pink, his face is not. And the other thing you want to make sure is that when you have your shape tool, you see that there's a fill and a stroke at the top. We are just using fills for a variety of reasons we'll learn later when we're learning more about vectors. So for the stroke, you want it to be a red X, which just means empty. Otherwise, you're going to have little outlines around all your shapes. Okay. Okay. To change the color, you can also see that the fill comes with a color. And I don't need to use one of these defaults. I don't need to use a gradient. Instead, I'm just going to double click on the window, the little thumbnail image of that shape layer, and that's going to give me a color selector. And from there, I can steal, steal colors from the Photoshop image that exists. Kind of like that color. Or I can just find it on the color sliders, wherever I want. So I might do kind of a really dark grayish blue for now. So this is the shape I made before. It was kind of brownish and it was a little bit longer, but I like this one more. So I'm going to keep it clean. It's like a stack of cutouts of paper. The other shape I made was this nose. Now the problem was, how do I know where to put the nose if I've already covered up everything? So this is again what I showed, just reviewing what I showed in the last video. You go to your background layer. This is your template, for better or worse. Mine's worse right now. It doesn't look like Bucky much, but it gives me something. And you hit Command J to duplicate it. Makes a perfect copy. Move that duplicate up above every other layer. And then take its opacity down to around 30%. This is called onion skinning. And there's going to be one more step that I'm not sure I showed you in the last video. And that is to lock it, to use the padlock to lock it. And the reason is when you use the move tool and you have auto select layer, that way you can select your different paper cutouts easily without it accidentally selecting the, the onion skin on top. That's what the locking tool does for you. Okay, I've got this nose. So the nose is placed. And I got that nose through, it looks like I took a triangle and then I softened it. But I'm going to delete that and show you another way. Because you can get these shapes any way you like. I can also do it with the ellipse tool. 
In fact, notice that the head shape I made is actually pretty similar to the nose shape. So another way I could do it is to just duplicate my last shape, Command-J. And then Command-T, not Command-T, Control-T, because I'm not using Photoshop. I'm using Photo-P. Control-T to get to the transform functions. And then I can right-click and say Flip Vertically. And then I can scale it. Holding down Option, it will scale towards the middle and make it about nose shape and bring it in. And then I can change its color to a pink. Now, how can I kind of taper it and actually make it look more like Bucky's nose? I can hit Control-T. I'll zoom in a little so you can see this. And I'm going to right-click inside that transform box and hit Warp. And now I'm going to tug in at these corners. I'm going to try to do it the same on each side. There we go. And then maybe broaden it at the top a little bit. Trying to go for some symmetry there. It's okay if it's not perfect and hit return. All right. Now there's a little line on Bucky's nose that's pretty defined. And instead of a line, I'm going to use the ellipse tool. I don't want you to use the line tool. Or I could use the rectangle. I can use, well, I'll do the rectangles. I haven't done that yet. And I'm just going to make a little vertical rectangle. I'm going to make it a nice dark sh color. So I can see it, really dark pink. Then I'm going to use the Move tool and move it down. Now I want this to look a little bit softer. And so to do that, I am going to hit Control-T and then Warp. And when I bring up these anchor points on this warp, it's going to curve it out on the top. And it's going to curve it out on the bottom. So you see the, the blue line path as I make these alterations. Hit return. And it didn't take, I'm trying to figure out why. So I can always try it again, control T, right click, warp, hmm, it's doing it, ah, so it just doesn't have quite enough pixel space to do it, so this is what I need to do. It's really odd. I haven't had that issue before. So this will seem weird, but in order to kind of work with what it's doing, I'm going to make a little rectangle that's horizontal. I'm going to fill that in with something dark. And then we're going to do Control T. Then I'm going to transform and warp. Then I'm going to soften the top just like I was doing before, but because it's not the smaller edge, it's easier to do. Then I'm going to soften the bottom. This is like how I would show an open mouth, except I'm doing a nose right now. And then I can bring these anchor points closer together. It's like a football shape. So you can kind of customize shapes using warp. Try to make them somewhat symmetrical. And this is how you can compound your transformations. So I've used warp now. Once I hit return, I can start over and do another transformation. Okay, so I've done warp. Now I can do control T and I can rotate it, holding down shift so it goes exactly 90 degrees. 
and then I can hold down shift 